Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this RedGamingTech.com video where we're going to be reviewing Kingston's HyperX Savage 240GB SSD drive. On screen now you can see me unboxing the HyperX upgrade kit which Kingston sent us to review. This upgrade kit comes complete with the SSD drive, a USB hard drive enclosure, complete with a USB free cable, a SATA free cable, a screwdriver, a copy of Acronis True Image, plus various mounting screws and a sticker if you so desire. And no, you can't have our licensing code. Kingston boasts that the drive is capable of a read speed of 560 megabytes per second and a write speed of 530 megabytes per second. And thankfully, throughout our benchmarks you'll see that these claims are very much backed up. The drive uses a PS3110S10 controller, which is a quad-core solution which features enterprise end-to-end -end data protection and can handle up to 100,000 random read IOPS and 90,000 random write IOPS which combined with Toshiba's A19 MLC toggle mode flash means that the drive is probably going to just about push the limits of what a SATA free port is capable of at least in best case scenarios We'll be running the HyperX Savage through a variety of benchmarks including both gaming and synthetic so we can get an understanding of just how well the drive performs in real world scenarios. If you do want more information on our testing methodology, our system or indeed more uh, actual shots of the drive itself then do feel free to look at the article which is linked in the video's description. First up we'll be taking a look at CD Projekt Red's Witcher 3 primarily focused just on the loading times. There are two tests. The first, the initial loading of the game from the desktop to the actual game itself. And then the second test is loading a save game from within the game. You can see a marked difference between the HyperX Savage and of course a, a Western Digital Blue one terabyte, which serves to give you at the very least an impression of just how much of a difference an SSD can make in gaming. Our Witcher 3 and GTA 5 tests were conducted with all in-game settings at their highest possible quality at 1080p to ensure that the maximum amount of texture and game data will be transferred from the drive to memory. This is also using an 8GB R9 300 series card, 16GB of DDR3 and an overclocked Intel i7-4770K processor and all benchmarks were ran multiple times with the average of three results used out of those tests. Next up we'll be running the Kingston HyperX Savage with paces using a variety of popular disk benchmarking applications starting with PCMark 8. In many of our tests the drive is almost twice the speed of a traditional HDD or hybrid but can't quite pip the more expensive Crucial MX100 to the post with its game loading times. The HyperX Savage managed to equal or exceed Kingston's claims of the Atto benchmark, demonstrating the SSD drives are now being held back by the SATA free interface. And the results of Anvil are the last benches we'll see as we get into some footage of GTA 5 loading times and our conclusion. So, is the Kingston HyperX Savage a worthy purchase? Well, the driver is a great option for both gamers and power users. I really like the aesthetics of the drive and I think the performance is pretty great considering the price point. I do feel that the upgrade bundle is probably the better value piece of kit as, in my opinion anyway, the inclusion of Acronis True Image as well as the USB hard drive enclosure plus all the other bits and bobs is really quite handy. Sure, not everyone is going to definitely require that stuff but those who do are probably going to find that the best value for money. There are only a couple of problems with the HyperX Savage. The first is that it's dealing with the issues of SATA 3. Quite simply put, we've very much reached the maximum performance levels that the SATA 3 interface can manage. Hence why a lot of high-end drives are now switching to PCIe. 
With that said, if you're either a gamer that's yet to make the jump to an SSD, or if you're even a professional who wants to use, say, a second SSD for Photoshop's swap file, maybe Adobe Premiere's cache, that type of thing, or if you're a competitive gamer and maybe want to install World of Warcraft, Counter-Strike or what have you, your poison, on the SSD, then it's certainly a really good option. Its performance is roughly what you would expect given the price point. Looks great, at least in my opinion. And in the case of the upgrade kit, makes it very easy for you to transfer your operating system to a new hard drive if that's what you want to do. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Do remember to give it a thumbs up or and subscribe if you want more, um, well, more technical reviews and console analysis and all the other bits and pieces that you would hope for. But for now, I'm going to get going. So have a great night and bye for now.